jungle, I feel lost. How do I stay motivated? You know, it's it's a great thing for us to talk about on the jungle today. You know what? Let, let's make that our focus today on the jungle. Sure. Welcome to the jungle, by the way, folks. Uh, appreciate you listening in and watching. Welcome back. And uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. And we will talk about this because, you know, I got to tell you, everybody that I've personally trained and worked with, every one of them, except for one. So out of a thousand people, they were all like that. Like what you just described. Right. They, they were like the way most people are, where they're kind of just going through life. They are, they are coasting. They are going. And they will come to me and they'll say things like, I say, well, you, would you write down your goals? Just write down your goals. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And they will put down things like, I want to play in the NHL. I want to go to the Olympics. I I mean, a lot of people I worked with were athletes, but a lot of businessmen at the same time. You know, I want to reach corporate goals. I want to reach this year's target. I have this thing, that, you know, it, it may sound funny, but there's a moment in all those people that I've worked with where there's a day where the light comes on and they all start there. I, I ask them what their goals are and, and they always say the same thing. They always go in the same direction. You know, I, let me let me give you an illustration so that you can understand what I mean. I had this young man that came with me and he trained with me for three years and he kept on trying to talk his sister into coming. And his sister was in the same sport that he was. And, and she wanted to play for Team Canada. She wanted to be go to the Olympics. She wanted to do it. But she didn't come at 15, didn't come at 16, didn't come at 17. She turns 18. She's seen her brother change dramatically and achieve his goals. And he's now playing in the NHL. And she says, can I still come? So he asked me and I said, sure, absolutely. And so she came and trained for one year. And it was like she woke up like nothing was the same after that and she goes through another season didn't make the team she wanted to make she wanted to make team canada that's, didn't make that's it the sister of the brother yeah and then she comes the second year and we're about four weeks into the second year and and we had at that time we were training may june july and august mm -hmm. so you know we had four months it's 16, 17 weeks working together. And this was about the fourth week. And I come into the gym and I see her like this. Her head's down and she's holding her face. And, and I said, are you are you okay? Did you hurt yourself? And and she took her hands up and tried to be bold and brave and looked at me and, mm. and I could see the tears streaming down her face. And, and I, I said, what's wrong? All of a sudden she said, why didn't I listened to you. Why didn't I listen to you? You know, and the, and the funny thing is, is statistically, we make approximately 787,000 decisions in a lifetime of a crucial nature where, where it's a left or right turn, right? I'm not talking about what we're going to eat tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, should I take this job or that job? Right. Should I do this at this job or, or that at this job? And there are decisions where there is a consequence and that's how you measure them. How many did you say again? 700, about 787,000. Wow, crucial decisions. In in a in a 70 year life. Wow. Okay. What the re research tells us and shows us is that 18.9% of the time they make the wrong choice. <laughs> That's a lot of wrong choices. <laughs> Almost 20%. Yeah, I mean, it's wow. it's it's scary to think. And then people start yeah. living with regrets because what happens is they have friends, they have associates, they have other people they, they function with or they did function with and they made a decision and they said, I'm going to this company or I'm going to that company. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And all of a sudden they make that decision and go in a different direction and then they see their friend excel and they don't and that's when you start to hear them say oh just live in the dream just live in the dream and you know when when you're making decisions about the goals that you have for life the hard part for most of us is we make goals that are unmeasurable you see goals that are unmeasurable by you don't inspire you hmm. if i say i want to go to the olympics which is a goal that I had when I was 12 years of age. And I said, this is what I want to do. I want to be the first Canadian male to stand on a podium. And you did. <laughs> and I did it. Yeah. Right. I realized very quickly when I raced in my first race and I finished dead last because I'd never raced before. That saying that was the wrong thing to say. Hmm. Because people set goals that are there and they're here. And the goal that you have to set is you have to set goals that say, this is what I have to become to do this. This is what I have to become to do this. I had a life-threatening, life-or-death experience in my life at 10 years of age. I, I thought I was going to be an NHL hockey player. I, I dreamt of it. I wanted to do it. I used to wear a Chicago Blackhawk uniform all the time. My favorite player was Bobby Hull and Stan Makita. And I wanted to be <laughs> just like them. I mean, this was, this was it. And then I smashed my head and end up in a coma. And when I wake up, I don't know who I am. I don't know my name. I don't know anybody in my family. Everything had to start over. I had to start new. I was, 
out of commission for 18 months, not doing anything. I gained weight. <laughs> I was out of shape. Right. I was no longer as strong as I used to be. How, how long was the coma? Like months? I, I was in the coma for three months yeah. and then 15 months of rehab. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's and, and so your life. I'm, you know, life has to start over at, t- at 11 and a half years of age. What really lit my fire, what turned my switch on, what turned her switch on was what I told her next. But what turned my switch on was people. Because people would come up to me and say, oh, it's so sad you'll never play hockey again. Oh, it's so sad yeah, wow. you'll, you'll never sing again. It's so sad you'll never go to school again. Because I was actually declared as being mentally incompetent, right. mentally yeah, yeah, yeah. handicapped. At 11 and a half. At 11 and a half wow. years of age. And and that was by the school. I, I mean, I wasn't allowed to go back to school anymore because I was disruptive in the class. Yeah. As the principal said, we don't have room for your, your kind here. Hmm. It just made me furious. And I remember my mom teaching me the letter K. Now, I know this is a funny lesson to use in a podcast, but my mom, <laughs> taught, me, my my mom taught me all the letters of the alphabet this way. And mm-hmm. someday we'll get through all 26 of them. But, you know, the letter K is is a straight line and then two forks, right? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. I okay. Guess so. And and she said, when you come to the letter K, mm-hmm. you come from the letter J. Right? Uh, a, B, C, D, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to do the alphabet. J, just yeah, exactly. okay, yeah, yeah, okay. no, J and then K, yeah. You no, come to the letter, letter K, and it's a place where you have to make and decide which direction you're going to go. And so she said, so you remember how to draw the letters. Mm-hmm. She was teaching me how to, how to draw the letter draw K. The letter K. Okay. <laughs> if you make a right turn, you go down, mm-hmm. and that means you're going to go around the block again because you're not ready to make a decision. Okay. Um, like the downstroke. Yeah. Yeah. So so you come to the letter K, you go down, and yeah. she goes, make another one, make another one, and just, just keep going around until you decide which way you want to go. And, <laughs> and she said, if you absolutely do not want to go forward, you make a left turn, and you just keep going. Right. So, oh, you know, oh, that taught me yeah, that the yeah, line is yeah, straight. Yeah, okay, makes now sense. Now she said, if you're ready to make a decision, mm-hmm. you have two choices. You can choose the spiraling down fork and it goes off like that mm-hmm. and you're going nowhere. Mm-hmm. But if you choose the up one, that's because you figured out where you're going, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of person you want to be. And so that's the way I learned the letter K. And when people would say this, I said, what kind of a person do I want to be? I want to silence these people. And I can't do it by talking because I don't talk very well. I don't communicate very well. I was I was behind. I was lost. I was confused. I mean, just like the question, I was really going to coast through the rest of my life. And then I just said, I, I want to be somebody. I had read the book by Dorothea Brand, Wake Up and Live. I wanted to wake up. Wake up has the letter K in it. Wake up. Every kid that I worked with, every person that I worked with, I look for a way to see what they repeated over and over and over and over again to themselves. What did they say? What did they do that told me that they were stuck in a loop they couldn't get out of? And I literally taught everybody I worked with to get your act together. Act is A-C-T. What action are you taking? What communication are you saying? And what are you doing with your time to change it? Get your act together. No goals, no focus, no focus, no plan, no plan. Feelings are just driving you. And feelings can't be trusted. As much as everybody wants to sell you something by saying it'll make you feel great, it makes you feel good, it makes you feel this. Where do feelings lead you? Feelings take you where they want to go Mm -hmm. and they're fickle. Because think about it. Let's say you get the dream job. Let's say you get the dream watch. You get the dream car. You get the dream house. But you look across the street and somebody's got something better. And you immediately want that one. And, And your feelings are not driving you. Well, that's why I say you've got to be who you need to be to go where you want to go. And, and if you can learn how to be who you are, where you want to go, you do it. I, I love to use the example of when 9-11 happened, when we had the 2013 flood here in Calgary. Yeah. What did everybody talk about? First responders. Mm-hmm. I remember here in Calgary when we had the flood and they said, we need everybody who can help us go to McMahon Stadium, to the football stadium. So I get in my car and I'm driving to McMahon Stadium and I'm about halfway there and it's bumper to bumper traffic. It's doing five miles an hour. And the guy on the radio comes on and he says, if you're headed to McMahon Stadium, please turn around and go home because we've already filled the stadium <laughs> and we have so many first responders that we don't need you. And I remember how disappointed I felt. Like, in traffic for like, I didn't time. make it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not you a failed. Fa- you know, I'm a, I'm a failure as a first responder. And then I realized that 
you know, first responders do what? They are prepared to step up, step forward, and step into the fray. They don't look at you and go, huh, let me think. Cole's trying to bench press this 225 pounds <laughs> I see on the bar, and the bar's sitting on his neck. Am I going to help him? <laughs> Got to think nah, about it. I'm going to let him just choke to death. Yeah. So he hits his goals. <laughs> <laughs> right? Some struggle. Yeah. Because... Yeah. He doesn't think that way. Mm. His job is, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care what is wrong with you. I need to find it and fix it. And when you want to set goals for yourself, you need to know where you are, what you need to do to get there. I sat down and wrote my goals. My goals were this. I lived in Saskatchewan. I was on a farm. And I, I'm saying to myself in the spring of that year, after I came back from skiing and fell in love with it and said, this is what I want to do. This is where I want mm -hmm. to go. It, it was when my light went on. In Saskatchewan. And, yeah. And I, and I wrote it down on my journal. 1965, moved to Banff or Calgary and start skiing. Wow. Okay. I'm 12. How am I going to move <laughs> my 12. family? I'm you wrote 12. this when you were 12? Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, what am I going to do? And then my, right. my next goal was, okay, what's my next goal? 1966, win entry-level races. I got to win one race <laughs> next year. When you're 13. <laughs> okay. 1967, win a juvenile race because that's the next level right. up. Yeah. 1968, make the Alberta team. Okay. So now I've Whoa. had three years under my belt and I want to make the Alberta team. 1969, be on the junior national team. 1970, be on the national team. 1971, World Cup top 10. Because Whoa, that's if, I a get, big jump. if I get in the top 10, yeah. if I'm in the top 10 and I have a, a great day and two great runs, I can win a race. And, and you need to know that in 1971, at the last race of the season, I was second in the second wow. run of the giant slalom. Wow. And the Olympics are coming the next year. That's crazy. And I'm, I'm going. You did it. I achieved all these. Mm. Now, did I do them in this order? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, you were 12, to be fair. As a matter of so, fact, I yeah. was a complete failure in 66, 67, 68. <laughs> don't and, talk about those. We don't talk about those. And 69. Yeah. And then I made the junior national team in 70, yeah. made the national team that same year. And then the next year, I'm racing World Cup. In the last race of the season, I have a second run skiing the gun barrel at Heavenly Valley in a giant slalom, which is like Mount Norquay. It's, it's like 60 degrees, yeah. slope, giant slalom. Cliff. And I finished second. Wow. In that second run, and I go, the Olympics are next year, I can win a medal. And that's what I came here to do. But you see, what kept me going all that time, what does my VO2 need to be? My VO2 is my volume of oxygen squared, my capacity to work. Hmm. How strong do my legs have to be? I have to be able to lift a million pounds in one hour. Like in, in terms of volume? In, in terms of right. volume. got it. Because I can measure those things. I can measure what my VO2 was every, every day. I can measure the strength in my arms and my legs every day. I can measure the strength in my stomach every day. Mm -hmm. What does that require me to do? It required me to have a plan. And because I had a plan, whether I felt like it or not, I got up and said, go running, run to the field. Just because your dad wants you to be in the field all day today, driving the tractor in the spring and getting ready for seating, how can I train all day? How can I do this? I can run to the field. I can ride my bike to the field. When I'm on the tractor and I'm cultivating, I can say, Dad, is there any labor jobs I can go do and you can do the driving? And he would say yes, and I go do the labor jobs. I, I have a video of you doing like jump squats on a tractor from, from back then. Like, I used, you're being serious. I used to do a thousand... <laughs> Pre jumps in a mile. Jump, jump, steer the tractor. Uh, jump, jump. I, I ha I've I would, seen that. Yeah. I would jump and come down and grab the steering wheel and go like this and, <laughs> yeah. and then correct it. And, crazy. And I would go up and down, up and down. I wrecked the seat. I destroyed yeah, that I seat. I can imagine. We, they had to put new seats on it and I wrecked that one. <laughs> right? Right. And I had a pail on this side of mm -hmm. steel bars that were weighted so I could hold them like ski poles out. And so I started with just ski poles holding my arms out, right. sitting, standing on the seat with my arms out like this. And then I'd push the poles out further and further till I was just hanging on to the end of them. And the weight of them with my arms would start to go down. i go, no, 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 fight oh, it, fight, fight it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I would say, okay, I need two bars that are equal weight, a little bit heavier. Oh. So now I've got two one pound bars because the poles didn't weigh a pound, right? right? And I'm going like this and I'm going, oh, I can only hold it out there with eight inches. And then I would, you know, I'd mark that one and I, I made that mark. Okay, let's make the next mark. Okay, let's make the next mark. And I kept on doing this. And every exercise I did related to skiing while I'm driving a tractor or a swath yeah. or a combine, well, depending on 
what time of year it was, what exercises I could do. Because when you're driving the Swather in the combine, you can't do arm exercise because you got to steer. Or a car. <laughs> I have a video of you on top of a car as well as trying to ski. <laughs> you were pretty but, You're pretty intense with this training. But enough about that. Okay, what I, sure. My point is yeah. it's who you have to be to achieve your goals. Mm. And that's why most people end up in the study done by Princeton, Yale, Harvard, where... All the graduate students for the last 70 years, there's a, there's a professor there and he's passed the work on and they've kept it going. And what they do is they ask every student, what is your goal? And 80% go, um, well, I'm going to start in this, but I'm not sure. Coasting. Now, these are university students right. that are coasting, right? If people feel this way, you're not alone. But here's the good news. 15% of them usually choose a related field that they end up in. Right. So they have kind of an inkling of where they wanted to go, but they don't quite know yet. But they usually make that decision after their first year. Hmm. And then 3%, they kind of mess around in that direction. So in other words, it's not only related, but they're starting to get more specific as they learn more. And only 2% find and do what they want to do and love to do. Hmm. Here's the sad news, Cole. That 2% is wealthier and achieves more than the other 98% combined. Yeah. Wow. Combined? Combined. Wow. For the rest of their lives. Wow. They're the guys who come to the reunions. And the high every, school reunions. Everybody's going, okay, how did he ever end up the head of that company? Right. See, I had my moment at 11 and a half years of age, life or death. I'm going, I want to wake up. I want to live. Mm -hmm. I want to go. I want to be what I can be. And when I went in that first race and the coach asked me and stood there and he looked at me and he says, what would you do if you became a member of the Ski Meisters? And I said, I would pick off one guy at a time. I'd go 168 next week, 167 the week after, 166. And Cole, to the race, 169 races later, I finally won a race four years later because I knew what I had to be to do what the big goal was. And so if somebody comes along and says, set smart goals and it doesn't relate to who you're becoming you're in the same loop as everybody else hmm. everybody's in that same loop and no focus no fo no goals no focus no focus no plan no plan feelings are driving you forward hmm. and feelings cannot be trusted because as soon as it gets tough you don't feel good and we don't feel good you don't want to do it because you, got you no don't goal. feel you got like no plan. doing you got it no focus i know lots right. of people that started one third of all the kids that I trained came, started, even admitted to me, this is exactly what I need, but I think I'll go do something else. Why? Because they didn't feel good when they did it. They didn't like what they did. They didn't, they, their friends didn't like it. They didn't like it. I hate to say this, but their parents didn't like it. Right. Oh, I don't think you should work that hard, sweetheart. <laughs> like, like, you know, just go, just go play baseball. Just go play yeah. football. Right. So first responders are trained people that knew they wanted to save lives, mm -hmm. knew they wanted to give their own life for somebody else. I mean, think about that. They were willing to, to come to that place in their own life where they were willing to climb a tower, the North Tower, the South Tower, and if the building caved in and they died, they died trying to help other people. Right. That's commitment. And, and when you make that kind of commitment, you're sowing a focus that you're only going to do the right thing next and you don't make these regrettable decisions. Mm. You make these decisions and say, does this take me closer to where I'm going or further away? So sowing the seeds in yourself every day of doing the right thing that takes you where you desire to go, this big goal way up here, which is so far away that you can't even see it yet, mm -hmm. you can just dream about it, is your first step. And Sowing seeds? Literally. Okay. Well, what does that mean for for me? So if my my goal of the mount the goal the mountain of goal for me would be if I wanted to bench press two twenty five. What would what, what would be sowing seeds? Sowing sowing a seed for you uh -huh. would be to take your day timer if you have one. Yeah. Or a scheduler. Yeah. Or your your spreadsheet or whatever you want to use and writing it down in ink and saying nothing. Put it in mm. red so that it's a blood oath with yourself. <laughs> Wow. Put it in your own blood if you could. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. All and right. Say That's pretty nothing intense. gets in the way of me doing my workout today. Right. Because guess what? If I don't feel like it, I don't get up. I don't do it. Right. If somebody calls me and says, hey, we're going out for a party tonight. You want to come? Oh, yeah. Sure. That sounds fun. Let's that sounds it. like great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That workout can wait. That workout can uh, wait. We can put that aside. Uh, I'll, yeah. do, I'll do twice as much yeah. tomorrow. We'll, we'll do we'll bench press tw twice as yeah. many sets. Exactly. Yeah. 
which doesn't work no. because now you exhausted yourself and then you don't feel like doing it the third day. That's what I mean by sowing seeds. My dad used to teach everything that I learned through seeds, sowing seeds. We had seeds. we had bins and bins and bins of grain and we would take samples from each and we would test them all over the oven to see which bin had the best seed for germinating seeds. Hmm. And when we found the best bin, that was the seeds we used. And, and then he would say, we have to prepare the soil for the seed to grow in. And that's, again, another sowing seed. Yeah. You prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? You prepare yourself by going, hey, I put it in in red. Then over here, I put my workout clothes in the bag already ready to go. Day before. I put my keys right yeah. there. I put my clothes that I'm going to change into afterwards so they're all there. So that when I get up in the morning, I'm not going, okay, where's my where's my running shoes? Where Where's my workout? What? Oh yeah, they're in the laundry. Oh shoot, oh, God, I forgot oh, to wash them. Oh, 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 oh. and and yeah. and now you're stifled again. So it, sowing seeds is moving yourself in such a way that all the activities of what I need to become is who I am. Sowing seeds is doing everything you need to do that will take you where you need to be to do what you need to do before you ever go do it. And, and you put it in place so that you can't deny it. You can't mm. stop it. You don't get stifled away from doing it. You get the ball rolling already. It, yeah. it, it, it has to be rolling already. I knew for me in the morning because of the way my dad worked that I had to have the implements ready to go when the sun came up. So I had to know what time I had to leave to run that distance, to ride my bike that distance. And I had to make sure that my knapsack was full of my breakfast, lunch, and dinner and the food that I would need and the water I would need. And all of that had to be packed the night before so that when I got up in the morning, I get up, I put the knapsack on, I put my riding shoes on, I get on my bike, I ride. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not having a reason to get behind and delayed. And, and that's sowing seeds, right? So you sow seeds with a focus to only do the right thing rather than an optional thing, which mm. causes you to make these decisions that you regret. The second thing is to know the fire in your flame. This is, we've talked about this in previous podcasts. Like when it comes to goals, what do you mean about yeah. with that? It's, it's knowing what you're gifted at, what you're trained at, what you're passionate about. If your parents haven't listened to this podcast, go get them right now and have them listen to this <laughs> podcast, okay? I'm not trying to get more people to listen, but well, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. I am. Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll be <laughs> but, honest. But go and get them to listen and and ask, get them to answer this, these questions. I'm going to. I'm okay. going to throw at you. Okay, go for it. And that is this. When you watched me growing up, from the day I was born, what were the things that I did by myself for hours and I didn't need anybody else's attention? Mm. I didn't need anybody else to be there. What What is it that I did that I just seemed to naturally do that you used to say to your neighbors and go, Cole's a genius. You should see <laughs> oh, it. Oh, oh, you thank should you. see the art know, that he yeah. makes. I mean, the so art amazing. he makes, he's a Michelangelo. Right. Or, you know, it's so funny. He takes care of the cat and the dog like he's a vet. Mm. I mean, he's taping them up. He's patching them up. He's bandaging them up. Yeah. You know, and all of that is revealed before you're six years of age. Hmm. So ask your parents, parents, if you're listening right now, okay, if you're listening, what did your kids do that you saw they could do this? I, I saw all four of my kids. And I watched them and I went, I know this is an area they're going to go into. Hmm. I know that's what they're going to go into because I could see it in the way they moved and what they did and how they did it. My second daughter, she could outreason me in every situation. <laughs> I could never win an argument with her. <laughs> right. And I went, you should be a lawyer. This is where parents blow it. They don't realize that when you see that giftedness, when you see that passion, when you see that talent, let them do it. My, I spent my first day on skis at Big Mountain at 11 and a half years of age, snow plowing. And, and to me, it was wrong. And I was arguing with my dad going, this is the wrong way to do this, wrong way to do this. And he would go, no, son, everybody does this. Everybody snow plows. What, so snow plowing, you mean like shoveling well, you, the hill? You put your... You put your oh, the you pizza. Your, we you, call it the pizza. You call it the pizza. The pizza. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Do the pizza. Do the pizza. Okay, that's the stupidest way to learn how to ski. It's the dumbest <laughs> oh, way. Oh, man. Why they teach that way, I don't know. Because your body <laughs> is not made to stand in that position. <laughs> Your hips hurt, right. your feet hurt, your knees hurt. I mean, it's ridiculous. You're made to go like this. Mm. The, the french fries. The french fries. <laughs> so when dad went in for lunch, he said, let's go for lunch, boys. And I had my older brother, younger brother, and my dad, and they were all snow blowing. Mm -hmm. I'm standing there going, um, can I make another run? I'll come in next. And, and he says, oh, okay. So as soon as they were out of sight, 
on the beginner slope, mm -hmm. where we were, <laughs> the bunny hill. I pointed my <laughs> skis straight down, and I'm going. It's like riding a bike. If yeah. I get the ski on edge, it's got to turn. Right. And did it at first? No. No. I mean, my first run was ended in a crash right. at the bottom of yeah. me splattering myself all over the snow. Right. <laughs> But I got back up and I went up again and I went, if I apply, what do I have to do? And and so I started experimenting, applying pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and pushing one ski. And I and when I pushed the inside one, I'd fall over. And when I pushed the outside one, it would start to turn and I would go, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Right. And, 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 you know, I'm making these great big, I mean, <laughs> I may be three turns on the whole hill and I'm already going 40 miles an hour, which I shouldn't have been going because right. I had no idea. And I had to splatter myself again to stop because uh -huh. I hadn't figured out <laughs> how, how to, to stop, stop yet. Hit the fence. Yeah. And, and I was going too fast to do this. Right. So, <laughs> the pizza didn't help. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, all lunch hour, I'm going like this. And by the end of lunch hour, I, I knew how to do this. How to carve, yeah. I know. Were they good turns? No. Was it <laughs> Were a they mess? really large Absolutely. turns? I imagine so. But for the rest yeah. of the day, I didn't even go in and have lunch. I just went up the lift and went skiing on my own and said, this is too much fun. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with the sport of skiing. And as you know... Three days later, a ski patrol pulls me out of the lift line, right. takes my you lift ticket, and the head yeah, of the yeah, ski yeah. school comes along and says, I want your son in ski racing. And I went, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> and your dad was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold on. We live in Saskatchewan. How's this going to work? So my point is, I saw what I was good at mm. before my parents did. And I saw what I wanted to do. But again, I'm... I'm one of those rare birds that wakes up going, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a writer. I want to be right. whatever it is. But your parents can help you they a can tremendous see amount. They can your see friends yeah. can help you. If your friends say to you, you should do this. You're really good at this or whatever. Yeah. Then you, you really should volunteer, get involved, find a way to volunteer and, and learn about it because that's part of it. Why wait till you get to 18, 19, 20 years of age at university and you're going to university and, and the third year you got to change your major and you got to do some, something completely different and start over again and now you're another three years behind. Why not find it out and experiment with it? So know the fire in your flame. My fire in my flame was I wanted to be a ski racer even though I never raced. Think about it. I never raced. I just skied and I loved the fact that I had the independence to do this and I didn't have to depend on a winger or a centerman or a right. stupid goalie or a stupid defender. <laughs> to make all the mistakes. Uh, right. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but that's part of it because that's who everyone else just brings it down. Jungle can't that's work in a team. Who I am. This is this is this is the second part of this. You sow with a focus only to do the right thing. You sow the focus to only do the right thing. The right? thing so that's going to move you forward to where you're going. Each day you focus on focusing the right thing. That's okay. sowing the seed. Got it. What do you reap? You reap with a view, and and this is. This is so crucial. You reap with a view to kindness and mercy to yourself. You reap with a view of kind. So you be nice to yourself. You don't beat yourself up when no, you fail. No, you don't look at yourself and go, mm. oh, I'm such a failure. I'm, I'm a never going to make it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. That's why I've told you this a thousand times. Buy yourself a set of magnets. Mm -hmm. Put them on the plates and lift only one more pound the next time you go bench press 225. It's not hard to find a little improvement and celebrate it. So, sow a view to kindness. The reason why this is so important is that if you sow that kindness to yourself and mercy mm -hmm. to yourself mm -hmm. and give yourself the benefit of the doubt, guess what you do to your teammates? Guess what you do to other people? You say it to them and you say, way to go. And when you say that, who's listening? You are. And when you're listening, you're encouraging yourself, even though you're encouraging somebody else. It's a double blessing. It's a double win. Again, letter K. <laughs> we'll go back to letter K. I, I come here. <laughs> right. Okay. I show Let kindness. Let me see if I can connect this. Okay. And mm -hmm. instead of going down and right. going, oh, I'm no good. I go. Hey, you go up. <laughs> I'm, I'm going towards where I want to go. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Let's say that day you don't do anything that improves it. Sure. I make another lap and come back tomorrow. Mm. It. It, it's it's the way it is. And then get your act together. Take action, change your communication, and start to time track your time. In yeah. other words, know how much time you're working at it. You see, the seeds that we plant, our gardens, the seeds sure. we yeah. put in our wheat yep. fields, yep. a tree, an animal, 
has everything it needs to be who it is and what it is. Like the embryo of the seed. Like it can grow into what it needs to be. Okay, yeah, sure. But you measure your crop. You measure those seeds, that growth, Mm -hmm. by the fruit that comes. And the more you focus on doing the right thing and reaping kindness and mercy and blessing and giving yourself that encouragement, the more your roots go deeper and deeper and deeper and make you stronger. So when it gets tough, just like the wheat, think about it. This little seed that's no bigger than a BB. Out of a BB yeah, gun. super tiny. Goes down, five to eight shoots come up. Five to eight shoots? Yeah. With one seed? One seed. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Five to eight come up and the heads go all the way through the shaft of the stem of the wheat mm-hmm. and go all the way up here and there'll be somewhere between 20 and 30 plus seeds up there on every one of those seeds. So it can produce that much wheat and multiplies so that we can feed the world. Yeah, that's a crazy multiplier. And, wow. And we need to be that as human beings. Wow. So that the people around us are encouraged and go, man, I like being around him. Hmm. And guess what? When they think that, they go, he's talented. Hmm. He's gifted. Wow. When you measure your crops by your root and your fruit. Hmm. Root and the fruit. Right? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Then you have the potential to do it. But here's the difference between the seed and human beings. What's the difference? You are who you are because an egg an embryo came together, the whole thing, boom, blossomed, and and that was you. Right. But human beings need coaching. They need training. They need teaching. They have to learn to grow. Right. Oh, yeah. Seeds just do it. The seed just does it. It knows how to. The crop just does it. The animal just does it. But human beings need it. We need it right from day one because we need the challenge to overcome right from day one. Think about it. A baby is laying on the floor on its stomach, (laughs) and it lifts its head up like this, and it goes, (laughs) boink. Yeah, exactly. Right, Smash Because the face. muscles back here are not strong enough to hold the head up. Mm-hmm. You have to develop strength in your body to finally get to the place where you can pull yourself up by the coffee table and stand. Right. You go to take a first step and you fall over. Why? Because you don't have any muscles. We have to grow. You have to overcome. You have to learn. We have to overcome mm-hmm. and everything we have to overcome. So that's breaking up the uncultivated ground. What? The bad seeds in you, basically. What do you no, mean by that? Not even the bad seeds yet. We haven't got to that point. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We're just getting to the beginning of why do I go out and cultivate the fields in front of my dad seeding them? Why do we break it up? Why do we work up the soil and make it soft oh, and malleable? Right. right. Preparing a place for our growth to take place. Again, that's sowing more seeds of a different kind. And, and here's how it shows up. Remember our girl that was crying? Yeah. Three years ago. You know what kept her from doing that? Coming and training with me? Oh, what kept her from coming and training? Yeah. What's that? It's because she went, what happens if I'm not strong enough? What happens if I'm not good enough? Mm-hmm. What happens if there's other ladies there and I'm the worst right. and I'm embarrassed? Fear. She didn't want to cultivate the ground that she was afraid to go into. She didn't want to go and prepare the soil to go, I'm going to go anyway and find out. Because for her, that kept her from doing it. Mm-hmm. And so break up the uncultivated ground. Break up the fears. Break it up. Mm-hmm. Go through it. If you have a feeling that says, I can't do something, ask yourself a question. What would I do if it was life or death? You wouldn't hesitate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. This is a horrible illustration, but you get my point really quick. The people that jumped off the towers jumped because they didn't want to burn. <laughs> okay. It's a horrible <laughs> illustration. That's I know. a terrible illustration. But you get my point. But I do get the point. Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's, right? If it's a need, I mean, then it, you'll do anything. But here's the mistake we all make. Ask. 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 Why didn't she come to me and ask me? I'm, I'm afraid. I'm concerned. Oh. I have doubts. I don't know if this is what I need or don't need. And we're afraid to do that. You know what? Because I smashed my head and I woke up and I had to learn all over again, I was never afraid to ask anybody for help. I was never afraid to say, what do I do now? Okay, now what do I do? Now what do I do? What Now what do I do? And you know what? My dad used to take me to the ski hill and he would stand at the bottom with me and he would say, look up the hill, look up the hill. Who's the best skier out here? Who's the best skier? He would make me stand there. I'd be going, I got a lift ticket. I want to get on the lift. He'd say, wait, wait, wait. Who's the best skier out here? When the best skier came, we'd be standing at the entrance to the lift line. He would say, go ask him if you can ski with him. Oh, wow. Okay. I would go up to the guy and I'd say, hey, you're the best skier out here. Can, can I make a run with you? Yeah. No one ever turned me down. <laughs> yeah. I was just a rotten skier kid. <laughs> and he just said, yeah. And all the way up the lift, he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a ski racer. Okay. What do you know? How long have you been skiing? Da, da, da. I said, is it okay if I follow you? Is it okay if I try to keep up to you? Oh, yeah. He says, I'm going to watch. As a matter of fact, why don't I let you go first and I'll watch you and then I can tell you what to do. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get my own lesson. Get your own coaching. Ask. Ask, seek, and knock. 
Ask people, seek the answers. On the internet oh, today, you can learn anything. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. and there's that letter K again. Oh, I showed up again. Wow. He's That's right crazy. there. Knock on the door. Why? Because I'm ready to go through the door. And it's the doors you go through that get you to where you want to go. This is the last part. Okay. So with a focus, only do the right thing. Yep. Got it. Reap with a view to kindness and mercy. Mm -hmm. Cultivate the uncultivated ground, and then knock until it rains on your crop. Knock it, until it rains on your crop. Okay. In other words, knock until you get the answers that you need. Hmm. Keep knocking because the first person may not want to help you. The first person may not know. You may have asked the wrong person. You may have found somebody that doesn't know or can't even communicate it to you. But keep knocking until what? Another right oh, turn? No, nope, another Left K. Turn, oh, no. I see it wrong coming guy. together. It's all wrong coming guy. together. Get out of there. Right. Oh, this guy He's going the wrong way. I'm not going with him. Ah. Remember I told you about Larry Nellis and he was wearing a national team sweater and I said, right. where do I get that sweater? <laughs> and he looked at me and he smiled and went, you earn it. Right. I said, what do I have to do to earn it? What do I have to do? What do you have to do? Not, what how do I think? get the sweater? Right. right. What do I have to do? To get the sweater. You have to do 100 push-ups in a minute, 100 sit-ups in a minute, 100 bench hops in a minute, 100 chin-ups in a minute. Ride a bike 100 miles a day, any day of the year. I was 13 and you, that spring. And I said, okay. You did it. Three years later, I rode my bike from Calgary to Nelson. It's 400 miles. Yeah, I so I days. want to know about that. And I became what he told me to do. You rode your bike to Nelson, BC? Yes. Through the mountains? Yes. <laughs> that's like a whole, that's a, that, is a, that is a journey for me to drive that. And you rode your bike. Where did you sleep? Did, did you do it in one days. day? No, I did it in four days. Where, just, 100 miles a day because I wanted to prove to Larry well, Nellis I could do it. Where, okay, okay. Hold on. Where did you sleep? On the side of the road? No. I, well, I guess. <laughs> you rode your bike to BC through the mountains. Yes, by myself. And you slept on the side of the road at 13. No, I was 15. You were then. 15. Okay. Okay. That doesn't make it any better. The first day I mapped Dude, it out 100 miles. I wasn't doing that when I was 15. Oh, where the water goes through under the road? What? In the steel pipe? Yeah. You slept in a steel pipe? Yeah, you know why? Why? Because my coach from the Ski Meister told me that bears won't go in okay. there. Okay. <laughs> that was the only thing I was afraid of. That's crazy. So? All right, all right. That's wild. The okay. second day I slept under a park bench. Uh, I turned a, a, a park public branch upside down and put my sheet over top of it. That's crazy. Laid my bike on one side, my knapsack on the other side, and it kept me dry, <laughs> and I slept on the ground. At 15. Yeah. The next day, I slept in a train. I didn't wow. Know. So when you got there, did he give you the sweater? No. <laughs> he didn't give you the sweater? No. As a matter of fact, he didn't even believe that I did it. Instead, he said, oh, it's great you rode your bike up from the bus depot. You could ride with the national team. And then, and then we went down to the bus depot. We picked it up. And I had said to him, when I put my bike in the national team office, because I wasn't going to take it up to the glacier. Sure. And, and then we went down and picked up my ski gear at the bus station, because I'd sent my ski gear and my clothes and everything I needed, my ski boots. Bye -bye by bus right. and so we went and picked it up and i as i went in to get it i said i didn't ride up from the bus depot i rode from calgary <laughs> and and i just turned and walked away and i picked up my stuff i came out we put it on top and he went what did you say i said i rode from calgary <laughs> He said, why did you do that? And I said, because you told me to. He said, I didn't tell you that. I said, yeah, first time I met you. I was 13 years of age. I came to the camp and I said, how do I get one of those national team sweaters? And you said, you earn it. Mm. I made the national team that year. Yeah. What do you wild. think happened? Yeah, what do you think happened? You got a sweater. Because I <laughs> did what I could do to become what I wanted to become. And it's true of any goal or dream you have. You have to sow the seeds. You have to reap with kindness and be nice to yourself. Treat yourself with kindness. Every day you encourage yourself because you sowed another seed. And every time you sow another seed, you're going to grow a crop. And as a result, you work up the uncultivated ground. You keep on pushing yourself through this uncultivated ground and you push yourself through and push yourself through and break it up. And you ask for help. And then someday it rains. And when it rains, you get the crop you were after. My dad used to say, we sow the seed, we prepare the soil, we pick the rock, we treat the seeds so that bugs can't eat it. They die. The bugs die instead of the seed. And we get a crop and we hope it rains. And by faith, you got to believe that it's going to rain. And when it rains, you get it. You see, my quote for the day on this 
Cole, is this. Getting your act together is knowing who you are and what you do best and then doing it. Getting your act together is knowing who you are and what you do best and then doing it. When I made these goals of what I was going to do from 65, 66, 67, 60, yeah, when I was 12, when I was 12 years of age. But I wrote down the word monumental. I want what I do to be monumental. What is my big, hairy, audacious goal? At 12 years of age, my big, hairy, audacious goal was I'm going to go to the 72 Olympics and I'm going to win a medal. What must I do in the next seven years? What are my markers? What must be done every year? What are my milestones? What you must have done every quarter of every year? What are my macro goals? What you must have done every month? What are my micro goals? What you must have done every week? What are my mini goals? What you must have done every day? What are my meso goals? What you must do every hour? What are my milli goals? What you must have done in the next minute? And finally, what is my moment by moment goals? What's important now? If I do N-O-W now, what's important now, I own O-W-N, same letters, and I've already won, and it propels me. And if it doesn't, you don't have the time to do that. Mm. And that's how you make the decision that you don't make decisions of regret. You make decisions of reward. And it takes you where you want to go. This is why most people don't reach their goals. It's because they're too busy trying to do what the books all say because it's all jelly beans and candy and cotton candy. Put a picture of the house you want. Put a picture of the car you want. Put a picture of the watch you want. That's how you reach your goals. Put a date on when you're going to do it. You can have a date for when you're going to get that. But if you don't do anything to get it, if you don't change your lifestyle, if you don't sign it with your blood of your own body, because when it gets tough, you won't feel like doing it. But if you have kids or if you're a kid, go do what an 11 year old kid that I worked with did. He heard me and said, mom, dad, can I meet this jungle gym, this crazy guy? Because what he says in his podcast, I want to do that. I want to reach a big, hairy, audacious goal. I want to do something that no Canadian has ever done before. And guess what? Last year, he finished third in the world. The girl that was crying in my gym, the girl that felt regret is now one of the top coaches in NCAA sports in the United States because she kept coming and learned all she could learn so that she would make sure the kids she worked with had the same chance that she wanted to have. That's pretty awesome. You've been listening to The Jungle, folks. I hope today you'll take it seriously. I hope that you will become a member. I hope that you will subscribe. I hope that you will want to become a Patreon that supports us because I can teach you more. I have extended material I can pass on to you today. If you become a Patreon, I'll send you the extended material and it'll help you go further. You've been listening to The Jungle, folks.